All right, today we're talking a big one, cirrhosis. And let's just get one thing straight, right from the get-go. Cirrhosis isn't some disease you just catch one day. No, it's more like the final tragic chapter in a very long story of damage to one of the most amazing organs in your body, the liver. So what is it, really? At its heart, cirrhosis is all about one thing, scarring. It's what happens when your liver, after taking a beating over and over again, tries to heal itself. But that whole repair process just goes haywire. This dense, tough scar tissue, it's called fibrosis, starts to take over. And here's the kicker, it's irreversible. It literally transforms the liver from this soft, busy organ into a hard, lumpy one that just can't do its thousands of jobs anymore. So let's start right there. Let's really dig into what this final stage of liver damage actually looks like. I mean, you have to appreciate the liver. It's an absolute powerhouse. It can actually regenerate. It can take so much abuse, but it's not invincible. It has a breaking point. And cirrhosis, that doesn't happen in a week or a month. It's the end result of years, sometimes even decades, of a constant, chronic battle that finally just wears the liver down. So how in the world does a healthy, tough-as-nails liver get to this point? Let's walk through exactly how that damage unfolds, step by step. Okay, so check this out. It all starts with some kind of chronic injury, right? Maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's a virus. This constant attack puts the liver's own repair crew, these little cells called stellate cells, on high alert. But when the injury never stops, they go into total overdrive. They just start pumping out tons and tons of collagen, which is just a fancy word for scar tissue. This scar tissue forms these thick, fibrous bands that completely mess up the liver's whole layout, trapping the good, healthy cells and literally choking off the vital pathways. So what's behind all this relentless damage? Well, here are the usual suspects. You've got heavy, long-term alcohol use, that's the classic one. But you know what's catching up fast? Fatty liver disease. It's tied directly to obesity and metabolic syndrome, and it is becoming a massive problem. And of course, you can't forget chronic viral infections like hepatitis B and C. They're huge drivers too, along with a whole bunch of other less common causes. And this, this is where the story gets really dramatic. See, a scarred up liver doesn't just fail quietly on its own. Oh no, it sets off a chain reaction, a cascade of crises that affects your entire body. It all kicks off with something called portal hypertension. Now, think of your portal vein as the main freeway for all the blood coming from your stomach and intestines heading to the liver to get cleaned. Well, the scar tissue in cirrhosis is like a 10-car pileup, blocking every lane. The blood can't get through, it backs up, and the pressure inside that freeway builds up to incredibly dangerous levels. And this one single problem, it's the trigger for almost all the worst complications of cirrhosis. So what happens in a massive traffic jam? People try to take detours, right? Well, your blood does the same thing. It gets forced into these tiny, fragile little side roads, veins in your esophagus and stomach that were never, ever designed to handle that kind of pressure. These swollen, bulging veins are called varices, and honestly, they're like ticking time bombs. If one of them ruptures, it can cause absolutely catastrophic internal bleeding. That intense pressure doesn't just cause detours. It also makes the whole system spring leaks. The pressure is so high, and the failing liver can't make the proteins that help keep fluid inside our blood vessels. So what happens? Fluid literally starts to weep from the surface of the liver and intestines, and it pools in the abdomen. That condition is called ascites, and it's the reason for that severe abdominal swelling you often see in late-stage liver disease. And the dominoes just keep on falling. Your liver can't filter out toxins anymore? Well, those toxins travel to the brain, causing confusion and serious brain fog. The crazy changes in blood flow can end up starving the kidneys, causing them to fail. The liver stops making clotting factors, so you bleed and bruise much more easily. And all that constant damage and repair, it dramatically increases the risk of developing liver cancer. It's a full body crisis. Okay, so you have this disease that starts off super quiet but ends in disaster. How do doctors actually read the signs and figure out what's going on before more of those dominoes fall? This is one of the trickiest parts. Cirrhosis really has two acts. In the early stage, what they call compensated, the liver is scarred up, but it's still, you know, compensating. It's managing to do its job for the most part. The symptoms are super vague. Maybe you feel tired, a little weak, a bit nauseous. It's so easy to just brush that off. 
It's only in the late or decompensated stage when the liver is really failing that the alarm bells start ringing loud and clear. Yellow skin or jaundice, crazy itching, and all those major complications we just talked about. So to really get the full picture, doctors turn into detectives. They have a few key tools. Blood work can show if the liver's factory isn't producing enough proteins or if it's not clearing out waste products. A fibro scan, that's a cool type of ultrasound that basically measures how stiff the liver is. The stiffer it is, the more scar tissue you have. But the real gold standard, the one that gives a definitive answer, is a liver biopsy. They take a tiny piece of the liver and look at it under a microscope. You can't argue with seeing the scar tissue right there. So once that diagnosis is made, the whole game changes. The focus shifts to managing the fallout, to slowing down the damage and dealing with all the consequences. And the strategy is actually pretty straightforward. It's a two-pronged attack. Step one, and this is the absolute most important thing, you have to stop whatever is causing the injury in the first place. Whether that's completely stopping alcohol, taking antiviral drugs for hepatitis, or managing weight for fatty liver, you have to shut off the source of the fire. At the same time, you have to get to work managing all the problems that have already popped up. And that management is very targeted. For that fluid buildup, ascites, patients have to cut way back on salt and take water pills. To lower the pressure in those dangerous varices, they're put on beta blockers. To help clear the toxins causing brain fog, they take a medicine called lactulose. And because that cancer risk is so high, they get screened regularly with ultrasounds. And through it all, good nutrition is absolutely critical to keep the body as strong as possible. But let's be perfectly clear about one thing. While all those strategies can help manage the symptoms, can improve quality of life, they cannot turn back the clock on the scarring. For someone with end-stage decompensated cirrhosis, there is only one definitive cure, and that is a liver transplant. And that kind of leaves us with one final big question. We've spent all this time talking about cirrhosis as the end of a long, damaging road. But where does the journey to prevention actually begin? How do we start addressing the causes, the alcohol use, the obesity, the viral infections, long, long before the liver even starts to scar? The answer to that question, well, that's where the real work begins.